why did God create war? Why does God create murder? Why does God create all the, the horrific things we see in the news? Well, today we're going to look at some video clips from people who are not Christians, in fact, uh, atheists, who really show they get angry at God because of death, suffering, disease in this world. And I want to put out some of their inconsistencies, some of the statements they made. We're just going to respond to some of those statements. So here's an atheist, Stephen Fry, who says that he would tell God uh, how dare he make a world like the one we live in. Bone cancer in children? What's that about? How dare you? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. Well, he didn't create the world like this. He created a perfect world. Sin messed it up. But wait a minute. If he's an atheist, then how does he decide what's evil and what's good? On what basis? I mean, what absolute authority is he using? From his perspective, he can't call God evil or can't call someone immoral uh, because they don't have an absolute standard uh, by which they can judge someone. So he's been totally inconsistent here, even using the word evil. In fact, he actually has to borrow from a Christian worldview to use the word evil. That's, that's the amazing thing here. That's how inconsistent he is. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain? Then he goes on and talks about a stupid God, so he's obviously angry at God, you can tell that. And that uh, he, he's a God who is a God of injustice. Well, once again, how does he decide what is just and what is not? Because as an atheist, uh, what's the basis for your standards? It's just your own subjective ideas. So anyone can have different ideas of morality. So why should what he calls just be what somebody else calls just. Again, he's borrowing from a Christian worldview, even using words like justice and injustice. Now we're going to a different clip, and this one by a person called Alex O'Connor. We're sometimes told that God has morally sufficient reason to allow suffering to exist. Indeed, if God is good, then he must have such sufficient reason. Perhaps suffering is necessitated by human free will. Perhaps suffering helps to develop a person's moral character, or maybe it's necessary to achieve some other end that God wishes to bring about. But intuitively, there appear to be instances of suffering that cannot serve any such end. I, clip after clip after clip of people like this that I see talking about the death and suffering issue just don't get it that this is not the world as God made it. This world is suffering from our sin, and God judged this. He's a holy God and he judges with death. In fact, we don't even deserve to exist. I mean, we deserve nothing because we and Adam sinned against a holy God, but he allows us to exist. And really, when you look at this world that we live in, this fallen world, it, it, it's a reminder of how bad our sin is, how, how much we have rejected our creator. He brought us into existence and we rebelled against him. And, God holds everything together and he placed upon us the curse of death and actually it was a loving act. It was an act of judgment, but also a loving act because it's through death that he's able to bring us back to him by paying the penalty for our sin. So they don't understand the gospel. They don't understand our sin, what it's done to this world. And so they really don't understand what's going on here. And they again look at God and blame God for everything. The biggest problem for theism here is not famously, the, the great intense sufferings of the world, like holocausts or earthquakes, but rather menial, uh, menial, less significant suffering, like being caught out in the rain or stubbing your toe or tripping over a curb on the street. So Alex O'Connor goes on and says, you know, th there's something that's even more, in, in his opinion, uh, more difficult to explain, and that is why we would stub our toe and, and hurt our toe and so on. In other words, all the little things that happen day to day. But again, he doesn't understand we're living in a fallen world. This is not the world as God made it. You know, God holds everything together, but he's not holding everything together perfectly. And so now everything is falling apart. And where to blame? It's our sin. 
See, people don't want to take responsibility for their sin. They don't want to acknowledge they're a sinner. They don't want to acknowledge they need a savior. And, and again, the interesting thing is they look at this world and they see all the death and suffering and disease and so on, and yet they attribute this world to evolutionary processes. And so what they're really saying is it's great that evolution did this, uh, and then they turn around and say, but if, if God's responsible for this, how horrible God is. Think of the inconsistency even there. And of course, God is not responsible. We are responsible. Uh, the whole creation groans because of our sin. Uh, Romans 8 makes that very, very clear. I wrote a book on the death and suffering issue. How can we understand death, suffering, and disease in this fallen world and understanding a loving God? And there are answers here that are very unique. It's a very personal book. It involves some real situations that occurred in my own life and following through the death of my brother and how my mother coped with that and how all of us as a family dealt with this issue of death, suffering and disease and a loving God. And the title is Divine Dilemma, Wrestling with the Question of a Loving God in a Fallen World. It's very unique and has some answers, I think, that uh, aren't necessarily in a lot of other books and very personal and helps us understand, yes, we're human, we grieve, we can ask those questions, but God gives us answers. So this next clip is from Dan Barker. He's a fairly well-known atheist, and here he is talking about issues of death and suffering and, and prayer and children and how there can't be a God. All you have to do is walk into any children's hospital and you know there's no God, at least no good God. Maybe there's an evil God. Those children are dying at the same random rate, even though their parents are desperately praying, desperately loving those kids, wanting some kind of divine intervention. So Dan Barker is looking at a fallen world. He says, go into a hospital and you see children dying and there can't be a good God. Maybe there's an evil God. Again, he's using words like good and evil, and he's borrowing from a Christian worldview to do that, assuming there's an absolute standard. So that's a major inconsistency that he has. But again, it's also, he, he refuses to really understand that it's a fallen world. We don't deserve anything, and everyone's going to die. I mean, think about the fact that it is appointed unto man once to die. So when people say, why is this person going to die? Well, the point is, everyone's going to die. Now, I'm not trying to... Uh, make light of this subject, but I'm reminded of what happened in the Bible in Luke, where the Tower of Siloam fell on people and killed 18 of them, and Jesus asked a question, and the question he asked, were well, they worse sinners than others, that they would die? And then his answer was, repent. In other words, that was their turn to die, and so make sure you're ready to die. We have to understand that this is a fallen world, and not only that, God knows everything. I mean, some of these People will say things like, well, uh, Christians will claim God must have a morally good reason uh, for why these things happen. Well, yes, uh, because he is God and he knows everything there is to know about everything. And so is it possible uh, that there is information we don't know? Is it possible there's some things we don't understand uh, that if we did could help us see things in a whole different way? Of course there are. But again, we have to understand too, this life is nothing compared to eternity. You know, you think about 70 years, 80 maybe, perhaps 90, compared to eternity, it is nothing compared to eternity. And we, we look at this world, why is, why is Dan Barker getting all upset about this? I mean, from a perspective of his own worldview, when he dies, he won't even know he was here. That'll be the end of it. And so, Therefore, life is totally purposeless and meaningless anyway. So why does he care? Why does he even bother? Except that it's a spiritual issue. That's what it is. In his heart, he knows, and he's convicted. That's why he gets mad about these things. Otherwise, why would you even worry about it if it wasn't a spiritual question? You know, well, so what? You can believe what you believe. Evolution did this. We're just going to die. That's the end of it. We won't even know we existed. Who cares? No, he gets all upset about it because... I think it comes down to the fact he knows he's a sinner underneath it all. He knows there's a problem. He's alienated from God, and he's really shaking his fist at God. That's what he's really doing. It's really being angry at God. Nothing fails like prayer. 
that would be evidence. If you could give some scientific evidence that prayer actually makes an organic difference, not just makes you feel better, but an actual difference in the real world, that would be something to put on the table. The fact that that's not put on the table shows that prayer is pretty much talking to yourself. How does he know our prayers didn't work? How would he even know how to investigate that? Uh, he can't do that. And so, again, he's assuming that he knows everything about every prayer and every circumstance uh, that has ever happened. Uh, really, he's, he's really assuming he is God. That's what it is. And that uh, he knows best what, what's the best solution for, for everyone. There's no need for a belief in God. Millions, tens of millions of people on this planet live happy lives, productive lives, moral lives, purposeful lives, lives of hope and meaning without deluding ourselves that there are these invisible personalities populating some supernatural realm. So what? what? What's the purpose and meaning of life? When they die, they won't even know they were here. So what's the point of even being happy now? It, who, who determines what happiness is anyway? Uh, what, he's, what he's really saying is life is meaningless, life is purposeless, we're going to die, that's the end of it all. Uh, make sure you reject God, don't believe in God. I, what's his point? Ultimately, what, what's the point of it all except that he is so against God? I, I think it's because he's angry at God, he's angry at sin. I usually find that these people that are like this, something happened in their lives where somebody died or some tragic circumstance and really they're angry at God and they're really vetting uh, their anger as they say these things and they want to drag other people along with them uh, and what we need to do is point people to the fact that there is a God who created everything and we rebelled against that God and we deserve nothing but he placed upon us the curse of death so that he could come and die for us and rescue us from our sin that's the message there's lots we can say about the whole issue of death suffering and disease in a fallen world and understanding a loving God but the interested about my own personal video dealing with this topic, I encourage you to watch this video.